Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Brandon Clements. Welcome to this new tutorial from Glass Hand. It's been a long time since we've been able to upload videos. We've been really pressed with a uh, big project that just came through. But we're going to be back at doing some more tutorials for you guys. Um, I really appreciate all the emails, all the comments from you guys. I hope uh, I've been able to answer some questions that you guys may have because I know how it is uh, starting out and trying to figure things out. Here at Glass Hand, we just kind of look at every piece of software as a tool. Uh, if you thought of it as like a big toolbox, we just pick out what software will help us get the best results. And um, more than often, it's it's been the ones that we've talked about here on the channel. But I've also worked in other animation software to get jobs done. So it's just a um, it's hard to cover a lot of that stuff. Anywho. Uh, it's Halloween, so I've kind of got my darkened dungeon here of this office space, and we're going to be doing a um, a candle here, and we're actually going to create this scene uh, and talk about subsurface scattering. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and see what we can do with this scene. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a camera. Okay, so now I've chosen a 24 millimeter lens. I've got my workspace set up and uh, I kind of have saved it as kind of my Octane user workspace. Let's go ahead and try to fix some of this panel. So I'm going to just kind of darken the um, the bars there so we can just kind of look at it and it's and in composition that um, that kind of makes sense. So maybe maybe a little bit off to the side here. And our main source is going to be from the actual illumination of the candle itself. So that'll be fun to, to go ahead and start creating those types of materials. Let's go ahead, change everything to path tracing, and just kind of go to our kind of standby settings. Um, I use this a lot from time to time. So like, I don't know. These are numbers that I use um, just to start out with. And then I'll tweak if I need to from our render settings. But those give me really quick results. So we'll go ahead and create the first shader. Uh, we'll go octane shader and let's make it uh let's let's start with a flame first this is going to be um emitting light in our into our scene so it'll be our like main source light it'll be the first stroke on our canvas if you will um if you want to think of light in those in that way so we're going to go to cinema 40 octane uh, black body emission so um it, it will emit just kind of like a light would um, not a texture emission, there's a difference here because we kind of get the same attributes that we would on a real light. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you just start from um, the emission shader on the flame. And of course it's completely blown out. Um, another thing we need to do is just kind of add a octane uh, camera tag. And then we'll start to enable some of these features as we go on. Uh, but I don't want to forget about it. So I can call this uh, render camera. And uh, let's create a, a, uh, a shader for the ground. Okay, so for the ground. Let's create another shader. I'm going to go ahead and pause. Let's create another shader for the wick. And let's create another shader for the candle that itself. So this will be the candle. And uh, this was sculpted in Cinema 4D. I, wanna, I wanted to actually sculpt it and add a little bit more detail. Just, uh, well, one, I really like the the tools in Cinema 4D to go ahead and, and start sculpting. Basically all you have to do is import a primitive and then you can change your UI to the sculpting UI and it'll go ahead and generate the tag once you click subdivide. So it's really easy to jump in and start learning um, and it's just just have a lot of fun with it just like I did and uh, I'll have a time-lapse video although I think the time-lapse video cut off for whatever reason I don't know what my system was thinking but uh, it cut off uh, about midway through the uh, through the whole sculpting process, but I think you guys will be able to see how I was able to achieve everything. Um, it's just a lot of tweaking. It's a lot of pushing and pulling at at, at the points until you're happy. Okay, for the ground plane, I'm going to change it to glossy, and then of course I'm going to bump the roughness up pretty high. Um, the diffuse, it's going to be dark, maybe a dark bluish, some kind of Halloweeny type of color maybe. Um, Halloweeny, that's a good one. We'll go ahead and take the specular 
maybe to about 90 or so. Um, you can go all the way up. Uh, I, I'm, I know that I'm not going to want a whole lot of reflection on the floor. So, and of course, we'll break up that that specular highlight on the floor as well, uh, just like we do on all of our objects. Because um, you know, no object in the real world actually has perfect specular highlights. That's just, uh, yeah, that's not real. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and go and create a um, a wick material. So again, very very rough and we'll kind of find that brown which I'm slightly colorblind I have to admit I know I I work in this industry and I it's when colors are together I don't really see them correctly but anyways brownish that'll work and let's kind of do the same thing here in the specular we may, we may need to tweak this later on the way this works is if the colors black then it's reading the actual number here so if we were to open it and make it bigger, you can see that when I'm changing this value, nothing is changing. Just because the color is actually enabled. So anything that's not pure black, um, it will start to read the color. So we can leave the float at zero and just change the color. Um, kind of confusing when you when you first open up Octane, but that's kind of how the float and the color values work. Okay, so the best way that I think to create a subsurface effect in Octane, if we use the specular shader, uh, we want to make sure that the transmission is set to something that isn't zero, so any other value that isn't zero. Um, and when we talk about the, the way light works and the way kind of light goes through an object or ref reflects off an object, it would make sense to um, pipe down the reflection so that light is able to be emitted in, or entered into the surface so light needs to go into and penetrate the surface and not actually be reflected back at the camera so um, I'm gonna use something like point two or something like that something low um, just to make sure that the light doesn't get all 100 percent reflected because uh, we need it to enter the surface so again if the value here is one on the reflection then absolutely nothing will be able to be transmitted it's kind of a balancing act another thing to note is that if the reflection color is tinted then the light that is actually going through the object or entering the object is going to be the complementary of the reflection color uh... so that's i think very interesting and something i guess that would actually happen in the real world it makes sense to me and then from here, let's go ahead and go into the medium channel. And I'm going to use this scattering medium. Um, it kind of makes sense, subsurface scattering, right? Um, and then we'll add, in the absorption channel, we'll add a float texture. Okay? And then in the scattering, we're going to be using an R RGB spectrum to kind of tint that color. In the absorption, I'll go ahead and set this something low, like maybe 0.1. And then um, we'll go ahead and tint the color, maybe something like an orangey candle, something Halloween, right? Since we're around Halloween, something like that, maybe. Okay. And you can see the light that gets um, absorbed into the object is tinted that orange color. Okay. And another thing to note, if we go into the transmission and we start to play with this and maybe give it a orangish type of color as well. Um, it's it's going to actually react to kind of almost like a diffuse. Um, it's not not the quite the same, but if we kind of give it just a little bit more color, we can start to kind of mess with the overall tint of the object itself. Uh, but we'll start to play with that once we get into the render um, section. We start testing materials a lot more, uh, going back and forth. It's it's really fun to do in Octane. And it's been the most pleasant way of doing subsurface scattering materials in the past. It's it's been pretty heavy on the CPU um, and long render times, a lot of samples, and I don't have to tell you guys that. You guys already know how how it is in, in some other software. So let's go ahead and um, fire off another render, see where we're at, and start tweaking. Okay, so this is what we uh, are at right now, and of course our candle kind of looks like glass. So uh, one thing I want to do is work on the flame. And we can do this all at once here in the live viewer. And let's go to the emission and then black body emission. And let's start to crank down our power um, low and see what happens. Now, um, you can see I barely have any type of emission into the scene. And there still is light. Um, well, since it's an unbiased renderer, it looks like by default uh, we kind of have this. 
I'll show you we have an environment that has this kind of color on it so by default it's it's already got some environment color I like to start from complete nothingness and then build my build my lights as I'm going forward okay and maybe it's a uh, HDR we use for the environment maybe something later on um, but I like to start from complete darkness and then work my way through in terms of lights so there we go um, we can see we have a super low value and it's still being illuminated so we can actually see it in the viewport but let's let's start to crank this up so it's maybe something like a light um, maybe higher we can tweak we can just keep tweaking um, Oh, maybe we'll just start at a value of one. That sounds nice and round. And then let's talk about uh, the color temperature. Of course, a candle is going to be a very warm um, color temperature. So we're going to actually go further down. I think maybe 2,500. Actually, 2,500. Um, I'm looking at my resource right now. 2,500 is actually around a uh, tungsten household bulb. So we need to go... We need to go lower than that. Um, a candle flame or a match flame is somewhere around 1800 to about 1930 or so. So uh, whatever we we like, maybe 1900. We can kind of settle for that. And uh, we're starting to illuminate our scene. It's kind of looking cool. We get it up here, and uh, it's pretty quick. So let's let's crank up maybe um, our light just so we could illuminate some of the outside areas a little bit more um, down through here uh, I don't know and like I said we can just keep playing with this later it doesn't have to actually be something that we're uh, focused on right now it would help us though in terms of getting the uh, the subsurface kind of look so let's see maybe like 30 and you know this doesn't have to be the only source in our scene we could go ahead and bring in an environment and then uh, have the environment give a little bit more complex color information into our scene so I, I'm gonna go ahead and try and do that and see where that leaves us okay so I'll go to objects and then HDR environment and then I'll go ahead and navigate to a file again I'll use uh, Maxime's uh, HDR environments that he has. I like them a lot. They're just great high quality textures. I'll leave a link um, to the one that I'm using. Uh, it's from a pack. I, I believe it's not too much money. Uh, if you have like maybe 10 or 15 bucks, I would go ahead and buy the pack because it's uh, really, really useful. So uh, let's pipe this down maybe to like 0.2, maybe 0.1. Um, and then we can go ahead and hide this in the viewport. So if we go to um, the kernels, just the regular kind of setup, we'll say don't keep the environment, and then um, we can bring in that alpha channel if we want. Uh, another thing we could do is just create a psych if we kind of want to uh, hide this checkerboard. It's kind of distracting in a way, so I'm going to do that real quick. I'm just going to jump out. And I kind of messed up our camera, so I'll kind of get it back into place how it was, something like that. I always do this with cameras, so a lot of the times I'll add a protection tag just so I, I won't jump out of the camera like that and mess it up. Uh, but let's go ahead and hide the camera, and let's take this ground plane. Oh, I do not want that many subdivisions, okay, or segments or whatever you want to call them. So I will go ahead and just extrude this up. We'll say 90 degrees. Cool. And let's go ahead and just bevel this edge just by hitting M and then S. And then we can add some subdivisions in here. Okay. So quick and easy. Go ahead and jump back in. Let's go ahead and send all of that information back to Octane and let's keep tweaking. Okay. Um, I was actually accidentally um, changing uh, the power of the texture. I normally just change the power of the actual HDR environment here so let's see what at zero we absolutely get no light and then you can see it like maybe point um, point oh five we can get a little bit more bounce light in the area It'll just help us a little bit more like I said kinda get some more complex color into the scene I like to have some type of environment because it's just like, kinda unrealistic if there's nothing really in the scene around it and surrounding it and helping create some uh, some reflections and things like that I'll go back into the scattering medium and then the scale is really going to help us a lot in determining how um, 
you know, if we you can see as we bring the scale value down, it's almost completely transparent. We can see through it. Um, but as we bring up the roughness in this object, that's where we start to get this really great um, kind of look. And then adjusting the roughness along with the scale. So wax is going to be extremely rough, right? Um, I don't know. Let's try 0.95. Why not? <laughs> we'll just make it really, really rough and start from there. So let's go and go back to the medium. And we'll start adjusting some of the scale values. So I'll, I'll increase this dramatically. What's 100 kind of leaving us with? You can see it starts to give this kind of uh, really cool bend of light and breaking up some of this into like this greenish color. Now if I go back down to 50, you can see it starts to diminish. And as we go down to 10, um, it starts to get away even more. So uh, this is uh, this candle is like real world scale. I if you've seen in the time lapse, I dropped in a cube, and I kind of roughly just put that to scale of I think it was around uh, three four inches or so. Okay, so this is roughly to scale in terms of how tall a candle would be. And then as we adjust the scale value, we're gonna see the effects kind of become more. Um, apparent so let's try something uh, low something like this let's go ahead and jump over to the transmission and let's start to play with some of these values a little bit more as we start to bring this down you'll notice that we kind of uh, lessen the effect of how far that light can actually penetrate the surface so uh, again it's just a lot of back and forth we'll go in and try to maybe go down to 0.7 and then let's go back to the we'll go back to the medium and then we'll start to raise the scale a little bit more and you can see as we get extremely high um, there's absolutely no light being able to go through the the surface at all so it's it's kind of a balance between uh, the transmission and the scale the medium also the absorption I mean all of these <laughs> come into effect and that's why it's so difficult sometimes to get the look that you want um, the way I do it is just kind of leave my absorption at like 0.1 uh, I'll tint the color and then I'll go in and adjust the scale and the transmission values um, the color values of the transmission of course so let's kind of bring this up a little bit more and uh, of course it helps to actually have some reference of candles so good old Google can help us with some candle pictures just to see maybe looking at candles right now glorious uh, let's try to find a candle that looks like something we want to kind of recreate the the look of so maybe something like this um, just just something that's got kind of a smooth tone to it um, so maybe we can keep this up at the same time I feel like it's gonna be impossible so again if you, <laughs> you just want to type in candles and go to Google images and find something similar like that we can try and work together so let's try maybe bumping up some of the saturation a little bit so we're getting closer here that was under the transmission and um, that's going to tint the actual overall color of the candle uh, let's go into the medium again and then we'll go let's try to bring this maybe to like a yellow kind of color and start to play and mix some of these these values together okay so we're kinda getting cl we're getting close and it's a lot of kinda give and take just going back and forth and seeing what we like I want to be able to have some of these darker edges here I think that looks pretty nice uh, it looks like the light is actually trying its hardest to you know get to the thinnest parts and be able to escape and scatter so uh, it makes sense that halfway down the candle we wouldn't really be able to see a lot of light exiting that material so something like that so I settled around the transmission of uh, these values of course the the actual HSV value here is very important in terms of like how the light is reacting with that material and then going back into the scattering medium uh, you know playing around with the color that you like here to get the kind of uh, tint to the actual scattering. You can see a little bit of this color showing up um, here around the edges. Okay, 
So uh, let's continue working. Uh, there's still a lot more we can do. It's fun to play with the subsurface scattering. I'll leave you guys to kind of mess with that. Hopefully you get the, um, the idea b behind a lot of these values. The scale, of course, as you increase the scale, it's going to um, tell the system that it's a very large object. So treat it like it was a larger type of object. It's, it, it's a value that um, does what it says. It scales. So if it's low, it's going to treat it like a smaller object. And if it's large, it's going to be a larger object. Uh, transmission, again, it's going to be the light actually being able to penetrate the surface of the object. Um, so it's just going to be a balancing between the transmission and medium. So as we talked about in the reflection and transmission, how that all works together, in the real world, it's kind of a balancing act. 15% uh, transmission here um, in the value slot, whereas we're getting about 85% reflection. So it's, um, you know, we can go ahead and, of course, it's a 3D software, so we can kind of cheat a little bit. There's three things that light can do. Re reflect, reflect, refract, and absorb. So it's a big balancing act between these renderers in terms of whatever shader that you're making um, about how the light is actually going to react to that object. Uh, basically, this fake shadows object, I've had to deal with it in the past. You can see that it makes a, uh, a big difference. Uh, my understanding of it is when it's on, it acts more like architectural glass. So um, the fake shadows will help you produce a glass that renders pretty quickly or a transparent object that renders pretty quickly. But most of the time, I go ahead and just leave it off and um, try to let it do its thing. So I'm going to go ahead and in the flame, I'm gonna, in the opacity channel, I'm going to use a fall off map. And what this will allow us to do is create this really kind of cool effect where um, we're starting to see through the middle parts and the edges will actually stay there. So then when we go and we start to add some of our lens effects into the mix, so let's go to post-processing, let's turn this on. Uh, we kind of get this glare power and of course we get the, uh, the ray amount. Um, I'm going to probably leave this around maybe just one and then maybe change the angle of it a little bit so we get some kind of J.J. Abrams looking kind of thing uh, and then we'll blur it a little more okay so like maybe it's an anamorphic type of lens uh, you guys have seen this kind of stuff in cameras before um, let's, we can bring up some of this spectral intensity uh, which adds a pretty cool uh, look to the overall glow of things so I'm gonna maybe round these numbers so 0.2 and then maybe five and we kinda get this kind of uh, really intense look to it so let's see maybe somewhere around here we kinda get more like of that yellow banding in there looking pretty cool so maybe let's not blur that quite as much maybe 0.01 uh, we'll leave the glare angle at 90 uh, that'll do and then the power Let's kind of bring that down a little bit softer so it doesn't distract from our main piece as much. And then the bloom, uh, let's kind of work with this a little bit. This can be fun. Um, if we were taking this with an actual camera, it would be pretty intense. Uh, but through the magic of digital creation, we can get something pretty cool. Maybe um, find a good in-between. So something like that. Uh, vignetting pretty good we'll go ahead and I don't think there's anything else here that we would need maybe we maybe we'll pull this up a little bit maybe twice as much 0.6 why not uh, add some more vignette and then let's go into the thin lens and let's increase the uh, the aperture and the f-stop so let's say this lens is like a, a 1.8 type lens we can go ahead and use uh, control and then middle click and pick a big focus point there and then let's go ahead and uh, let's increase our aperture edge so we kinda get some um, cool little effects happening here and you can see as we kinda bring this in and out of focus we get these kinda really cool hot spots so maybe 3.5 in our f-stop so everything's uh, 5.6 so we j it's a hint um, and we kinda get some of these cool areas in our comp. So another thing I want to do is probably add one more light source and uh, it's because our scene is very um, very orange we could maybe play around with our um, overall kind of global light but um, 
it's not really giving the effect that I want. It's just when we increase the HDR, we're just getting light everywhere. And uh, that's not really something that I want. So let's go ahead and kind of leave that diminished. Let's just add a light. We'll go and add an octane area light. And let's actually have a target on it. And then the target will be the candlestick. So this is always fun to use. We can jump out. We can pause this real quick. And then we can start to move our area light up maybe to the side. Um, we'll start to play with it a little bit. We'll send everything back to Octane. And then maybe we treat this maybe something like it's a moonlight or something coming out coming in through a window. So let's see. Um, I'm not very good with my whole metric system. Like, <laughs> let's, oh, a meter, maybe a half a meter. So maybe 0.5 meters of X. And then uh, let's do like a meter into Y. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier for me to think in meters than it is centimeters for some reason. Um, okay, cool. Uh, let's go to the octane tag, and this is where all of our um, changes are going to happen. And I was thinking we could have it something like really blue and bring down the power. And this would kind of be like maybe some more moonlight coming in through a window. Maybe something like that. I like to always kind of turn the lights on and off to see what kind of difference they're uh, making to the scene. I think we could back the light up a little bit more. So I'm going to go to my world coordinate system and just kind of back it up just some more. And then we'll jump back into the render camera. Maybe bring it down so it's a little bit more straight. Maybe something like that. Okay, cool. Looking pretty good. We may even want to kind of add this nice highlight to the other side. So I'm going to hold control and I'm going to go ahead and copy that light and just bring it over to the other side. Easy as that. Looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead. Maybe we can, let's try to zoom in a little bit more. I don't know. Let's adjust some of this composition. Maybe we don't need to see the whole candle. Is it really that important to see the whole thing? <laughs> uh, maybe something like that and then we'll pick another f kind of focus point and then let's back the uh, the ground plane up so I'm gonna push it back into the Z so back in the Z and then let's increase the size of it and it looks like we need to increase it tall as well so maybe something like that I never like these backdrops to actually be apparent um, always think it kind of looks a little tacky when you can actually see that there's a backdrop back there. <laughs> it's just kind of there supposedly to, um, the way I think about it, just there to block off some of the extra light and stuff. Okay, so there we go. Um, even so, let's bring the, let's bring the uh, reflection of that ground plane down even more. So, I think it's just really going to be there just to catch kind of the extra light and it doesn't really need to actually make itself noticed. Okay? That's kind of how I think about these things. So let's go ahead and let's think about, let's see where our lights are just to make sure if we like them. Yep, yep. Pretty good. I like to have those, the highlights on both sides. It, it looks cool. It, it does rec remind me of Moonlight a little bit. And, um, you know, we could always just like the flame intensity. Maybe it's too much. Okay, so maybe instead of 30, we try 10. Now that we kind of got things how we want, we can kind of cheat a little bit, maybe two. I kind of like it to be a little bit kind of hot there in the in the in the flame, or the uh, I'm sorry, the pocket of the candle. And then um, let's let's keep tweaking our not the wick. <laughs> let's keep get tweaking the candle itself. So let's go to the transmission and um, bump up bump up this guy maybe 20 maybe more this whole tutorial is about subsurface scattering so there better be some subsurface scattering here or else some people are going to be angry and by people I mean me because it'd be kind of useless not to utilize this effect even more so let's get crazy 35 okay cool so um it's looking pretty good. Uh, of course, we can always go through, and in that transmission, I, I think I think that would be really cool is to add a texture in here. So let's go into the um, C4D Octane. Let's say multiply, 
And I want to save this color. So in R17, we can just kind of save it. Cool, there it is. And then we'll go ahead and say we want an RGB spectrum on the top. And on the bottom, we want to have a image texture. So the idea here is just to take the color and multiply it over top of the black and white scale value that, or this, uh, the black and white scale, the black and white value map. I don't know why I was saying scale, <laughs> black and white value map, okay? So this is being multiplied over our texture. Let's find it. And of course I have a folder full of grime and all kinds of grit and things like that. Uh, it just comes in so handy. Um, I like to change the gamma to 1. Actually, may we may just take some artistic liberties here and start to adjust the gamma even higher to get a desired effect. So that way we don't have to color correct the image. Yeah, 2.2 looks good. Um, in most cases, and in most renders, if you're using a value map, you want to use the gamma at 1 because you just want the renderer to not have a gamma curve on top of a value map. But like I said, let's take some artistic liberties and just pump it up just so we can get some more contrast. And then a trick I like to use to be able to wrap this kind of stuff easily is um, I'll take the uh, texture tool here. I'll make sure that I select the object and select the tag. Uh, change the tag to cylindrical and then I'm going to right click on the tag itself and then I'm going to say fit to object and it will wrap it like it's a cylinder so then we get some nice scratches that appear okay and we can always go in and adjust the repetition of the grime so if we really wanted it to be uh, repetitious so stuff like that looks really pretty cool to me. Um, of course, I don't like the repetition so much. Maybe two. Okay, cool. Uh, so you can always play around with that kind of stuff, but you guys get the idea of how that can how that stuff can work, and it's a valuable tip uh, to be able to um, color coat those value maps how you want them. So let's go ahead and take the image texture and then let's just apply it to the reflection. Now we can start to mix the texture in with the uh, value that we have here. And um, a lot of the times I'll have like a really low value in the float and then I'll try to um, just find what I like going back and forth, okay? So this isn't like probably not completely physically correct, but um, I, I want to have some more of this rim light just for artistic reasons. Okay, so maybe pump it up a little bit more. 0.22 maybe. We can settle there. And um, maybe even tweak some more. Why not? Okay, and uh, last thing, transmission. I still went in here and played around because I just can't stop uh, messing with this. Uh, it looks good for me for a little bit, and then I'll go in and I'll just keep tweaking. But that's the beauty of 3D is that you can always use Control-Z if you want to. So 63 or so, is these are the values I landed at for the HSV for the actual candle itself. So let's do a, a final render and see what it looks like. All right, so this is our final render, and uh, we're looking pretty good. Uh, I really like how this turned out. Um, it was fun to go actually go in and jump in and, and tweak some of the subsurface scattering stuff. I had a lot of fun doing that. I kind of went overboard a little bit. Um, it looks like the bump is a little bit too much here. Maybe the roughness is a little bit too much. Uh, you know, there's there's some things here that I probably change, but I'll leave that up to you guys to be able to do. Um, but I hope hope this got you started, and I found this image online um, that is actually pretty close to the same result here that we're getting okay um, obviously my candle is probably a little bit thicker um, than theirs is uh, you know there's gonna be some things scale comes uh, big into play when it comes to these types of scenarios um, you know the scale parameter but also how big the object is in the viewport itself so that stuff is gonna make a big difference but um, so far I was happy with the progress. I hope you guys enjoyed everything here. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Like this video. Uh, it really helps me out knowing what you guys like to see and what you don't like to see. And um, happy Halloween, guys. Uh, so we're approaching Halloween. So spooky candle. Spooky. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.